at if they've been diagnosed with cancer. Uh, if anybody cannot hear, please use your chat box and, and say something, and, and uh, the moderator, Jen, will try and help you out and see what she can do to get it so that you have audio. Well, let's go ahead and get started. So I am going to go off camera and enlarge my desktop so that everybody can see uh, my presentation a little better. And first, we're going to start by talking a little bit about what contributes to cancer risk. And there are several things. One is nutritional deficiencies, particularly vitamin D possibly vitamin A and antioxidants. Processed diets can also be a factor. Heavily processed foods, particularly dry foods, can contribute to inflammation, uh, not within the intestinal system, but in, within the entire body. And processed diets are also assisted to contribute to allergies as well as hormonal conditions such as Cushing's disease. It's also well known that ongoing systemic inflammation precedes cancer. Dysbiosis. What is dysbiosis? Dysbiosis is an imbalance of good versus bad bacteria within the gut. Uh, and it can contribute to cancer because bad bacteria can outnumber good bacteria or yeast can overgrow due to indiscriminate antibiotic usage. Uh, Low quality ingredients in processed diets may also contribute to, to dysbiosis, but dysbiosis contributes to inflammation, which contributes to cancer. Obesity. This is one that's on the rise, unfortunately. It has been shown, and this is true for people too, that fat produces substances that increase inflammation, and it's pretty well known that inflammation contributes to cancer. Chemicals in the food or in the environment. Food preservatives such as BHA and BHT. BHA is butylated hydroxy anisole. BHT is butylated hydroxy toluene. Um, they're often used in treats, uh, sometimes in even certain supplements, joint supplements. Lawn chemicals are another, tobacco smoke, herbicides. Pesticides, sometimes even the ones we're told are safe to be used on our pets. That is not to say that you should stop using all flea and tick treatments on your pet, but if your pet has cancer, you may want to reconsider. Chemicals. Oh, whoops, sorry. <laughs> stress also weakens the immune system, and stress can be caused by pain, uh, lack of activity, stimulation, or other illnesses. When, what all these things really have in common, though, is that they contribute to inflammation. I want to take just a minute to talk about how cancer cells grow. I'm not going to dwell on this. I know everybody doesn't want a biology lesson. But just, just to show you a little bit about how cancer begins. So first you have, you can have a carcinogen or you can have chronic inflammation. Then you have a situation called squamous metaplasia where there's just a few abnormal cells. And this progresses with more and more abnormal cells until ultimately you have cancer. This graphic represents an epithelial cancer or carcinoma, but this is really how all cancers begin. Um, so where can we intervene? That's what we really want to know. Well, the answer is we can intervene at any one of these stages, but ideally we want to intervene as early as possible. Can we test for cancer risk? Well, yeah, now we can. Until recently, there weren't any really reliable ways to tell whether a patient's uh, at risk for cancer, but our laboratory called Veterinary Diagnostic Institute has the capability of performing a couple of different tests that can determine a pet's overall cancer risk, a pet that, that does not have cancer, um, if there are tumors or something suspected to be cancer, well, they have a test that can help us differentiate. That's the TK panel. The in case is the one to test for a pet that isn't showing any obvious signs of cancer, but we just want to know risk. Vitamin D testing is very important for a pet that we think is at risk for cancer or that has cancer. 
Uh, studies in humans have shown that not only does vitamin D decrease with age, but low levels can lead to increased inflammation and increased risk for cancer. We at Natural Pet have tested at least 20 patients for vitamin D levels thus far, and we've only seen two patients where the levels were deemed adequate. That's a whopping 90% of our patients tested that had low levels of vitamin D and needed supplementation. Um, we can also test by taking a needle aspirate and looking at the cells under a microscope, either of an exterior tumor or of an organ with using ultrasound. What are some signs of possible cancer? Obviously, lumps, swellings, um, especially of the lymph nodes. And it's important to know where the lymph nodes are on your pet. So whether you are a current client of natural pet or not, it's a good idea to ask your veterinarian, hey, can you just show me where my pet's lymph nodes are so I can just keep an eye on them in case they're changing in size. Um, a lack of energy or lethargy, loss of appetite, vomiting, distended abdomen. Now this can be a sign of other diseases as well, but if your pet belly is looking bigger, you really ought to have them checked out. Trouble pooping, um, any kind of sudden severe lameness, especially in large breed dogs, or any kind of bleeding from the nose or mouth. These are definitely not the only signs of cancer. However, they really seem to be some of the most common. If you notice any change in your pet over six years of age, they really should be checked out by their veterinarian soon to determine if there's any cause for concern. Finally, how is cancer treated? Well, First, I just want to talk real briefly about some conventional methods because they're, they are effective. They can be very effective. They can be used alongside holistic, med uh, holistic methods, what we call integrative medicine. Um, so surgery. Some tumors can be removed, uh, either part or all. Some tumors are too big or too attached to certain structures to be removed. Um, Chemotherapy and radiation also can be very effective therapies, but they really take a machine gun type approach um, and they, they harm and kill healthy cells along with cancer cells. These chemo drugs, they cannot differentiate a normal cell from a cancerous cell. And this often results in pretty severe GI signs like vomiting, diarrhea, which are treated with suppressive medications. And radiation therapy, even though it's focused, it can never kill only 100% cancer cells. And depending on the location of treatment, can result in this radiation burn, sloughing of skin, and significant pain. In contrast to these treatments, Holistic treatments help to support the immune system, correct imbalances and illnesses that contribute to cancer risk, and in many cases actually help kill cancer cells while sparing normal healthy cells. And we, again, we can use both conventional and holistic treatments at the same time to help support the patient. What types of holistic treatment are available at Natural Pet? Lots of things. And one of the easiest things, one of the things, something that you can do even before you come and see us is change your pet's diet. Uh, by now, hopefully most of us know cancer thrives on sugar. Sugar in the diet contributes to a lot of other bad health conditions. But one of the first things and best things you can do if your pet's diagnosed with cancer is to change his or her diet. Eliminating simple carbohydrates and ingredients that are easily broken down to be used by the tumor. So these would include things like white rice, potato, corn, corn syrup, which again is present in many treats. You got to read labels in this day and age. They'll sneak it in. Um, and of course, sugar. A good way to change the diet is to use some sort of premix supplement, such as the Honest Kitchen and you just add cooked or raw, your option, meat, and it makes it a nutritionally complete diet. 
Nutraceuticals. Nutraceuticals will help strengthen and support the immune system to help the body fight cancer. Herbs can also strengthen and support, but may also, in, in addition, have direct anti-cancer effects. Microbiome restorative therapy. Hmm, sounds pretty intense and technical. Well, it's not. It involves replenishing the beneficial bacterial species in the gut of a sick patient by using donated microbiome from the feces of a healthy patient, kind of like a fecal transplant in people. Um, it can help with many conditions other than cancer, such as allergies and other immune imbalances, but pretty much it supports the immune system to help the body fight cancer. And homeopathy, while not treating the cancer directly, can also help correct imbalances in the body that led to susceptibility to cancer in the first place. Ozone therapy and UV blood therapy. These are something that is fairly unique to us at Natural Pet. We're very excited to be using these treatments. We've been using them for about six months now, having good success. Uh, we will be doing a future webinar on just ozone and UV therapy. Um, in fact, all of these subjects at some point will be featured in future webinars, so stay tuned. But ozone therapy and UV blood therapy help to activate the immune system to help the body fight cancer as well as weakening cancer cells. A couple other therapies I'll mention, um, vitamin D supplementation and something called neoplazine. So we'll discuss a little bit about each of these modalities and again, future webinars will be more in depth. Nutraceuticals. So uh, there are many natural substances or nutraceuticals that can help fight cancer. Here's a list of a couple. Inositol hexaphosphate or IP6 has been shown to boost the immune system and may help slow the growth of cancer cells. Mushroom extract. There are many different mushroom species that have a cancer fighting activity and these include maitake, shiitake, cordyceps, lion's mane, reishi, and turkey tail. There are a few others but those are the main ones and all these have been shown to help stimulate the immune system, kill microorganisms, and some can even weaken and kill cancer cells. At Natural Pet, we have a special combination product made exclusively for our patients from all organic mushroom stock. Glucorphanin is an extract from broccoli and it has been shown in some studies to help fight cancer. Omega-3 fatty acids help to decrease overall inflammation and therefore they decrease one of the factors that predisposes and perpetuates cancer. Antioxidants, things like vitamin C, grapeseed extract, astaxanthin, vitamin E, resveratrol and others can help protect normal cells from being damaged. Herbs. There are two main classes of herbs, Chinese and Western herbs. Um, but herbs in general, an herb is a part of a plant. It usually is the root, sometimes it's the leaves, the bark, or the flowers that have medicinal properties. Western herbs are those native to the Western world, United States, Canada, Mexico, um, and some examples of Western herbs are milk thistle, dandelion root, slippery elm, and turmeric. Chinese herbs are those that are native to and mostly grown in China, though there are a few companies that grow their herbs outside of China. Uh, examples of Chinese herbs are angelica root, buplorum root, carthus flower, and romania root. The companies that we obtain our herbs from all practice good manufacturing practice good manufacturing standards as developed by the FDA. They perform testing of every batch to ensure there's no uh, pesticides or herbicide residues as well as ensuring the active constituents are present. Not all companies do this and therefore not all herbs from different companies are equal. Just a small little elaboration. So the active constituents take an herb such as buplorum, we'll say there are probably at least three or four active constituents in that herb that I can think of in my mind that have actually been tested. So that's what they're looking for when they're testing to make sure it has the active components that it really has and it's going to do what they say it's going to do. Microbiome restorative therapy. 
We talked a little bit about it very briefly. It's akin to a fecal transplant. However, in dogs and cats, <laughs> it can be done either by retention enema, as it's usually done in people. Uh, this is usually preceded by a good cleansing, cleaning out of the colon with some rectal ozone to sterilize it. Or it can be done by mouth because our, our pets don't really have an issue with eating poop, fortunately. But before you laugh about this, there are actual studies showing that fecal transplants in humans have not only helped to cure antibiotic resistant stridium difficile, but they also can alter hormones to help with metabolic disease, hormonal diseases, and, and possibly even cancer. Here's just a couple of studies. Um, it, we're very in the very early stages of research with this, but it looks promising. But rather than having a direct effect on cancers, this treatment, again, it more supports the immune system to help it fight the cancer. It has to be the right poop, however. So going out and getting your neighbor's dog poop to feed to your dog with a health problem may not be your best bet, especially if their dog has been on any drugs or is on processed food. Homeopathy. So since this presentation is not really about homeopathy, I'm just going to touch on the definition. But really, I could, I could talk for hours about homeopathy, but I won't bore you with all that. Homeopathy is the process of using very dilute amounts of substances that in a healthy patient would create the signs and symptoms we see in the sick patient. And it's based upon the idea that the signs we're seeing so whether it's a swelling, it's inflammation, it's itching, it's coughing, it's the body's way of trying to fix something. It's trying to get back to balance, but it can't. It's getting stuck. So when we give one of these substances, we kind of give the body just a little push, and then it's going to push back and hopefully get back into balance if we choose the right remedy. So how can homeopathy help patients with cancer? There are several homeopathic remedies that can be effective for nausea and vomiting, as well as decreased appetite, which are some of the major side effects of chemotherapy. Also, there are a few studies supporting topical preparations of calendula in decreasing skin inflammation and damage from radiation therapy. And homeopathy can also be used to help rebalance the immune system. A lot of this evidence is kind of from experience uh, from colleagues rather than your typical controlled studies because this type of practice is so individualized and really two patients with the same condition but different signs could be treated with, with two different remedies and still uh, improve. Ozone and UV blood therapy. Tumors thrive in an acidic and low oxygen environment. They use something called anaerobic, which means without oxygen metabolism, which results in higher use of fuel or glucose than normal cells. Ozone treatment helps to alkalinize the environment as well as flooding the system with oxygen. And this treatment can be useful for much more than cancer. It can be administered in several different ways, including direct injection into or around tumors, or uh, even inhaled. We have one patient who has some sort of abdominal cancer. We don't know exactly what. He, he hasn't had an exact diagnosis. But he was given two months to live, I think, last uh, July. And he's with us getting ozone and UV blood therapy. And he's doing pretty well. Uh, the UV blood therapy helps the ozone work better. With both ozone and UV light, just the right amount of UVA, UVB, and UVC rays, it activates cytokines, or cellular signals, which help modulate the system. So that means if it needs turning up, it's going to get turned up. If it needs calming down, it's going to get calmed down. Um, they can also help to increase natural killer cells. And our machine is pre-programmed to deliver a very specific amount of UV energy to the blood that is considered the sweet spot for this effect. So together, ozone and UV blood therapy can be used as the primary therapy against cancer, or they can be used as an adjunct to other treatments, whether it's conventional or holistic. Um, 
<laughs> Unfortunately, we humans have been trained by dermatologists mostly to believe that UV light is damaging. But the truth is UV light is vital to life in many ways. One example is that humans need it to produce vitamin D, even though our furry friends don't do this. Um, but our experience is really showing us these types of treatments can give our patients an improvement in their quality of life for much longer than they would have had otherwise. And what we most commonly hear from clients whose pets have this treatment is that their energy and appetite is improved. Some other therapies, so vitamin D testing. Uh, our lab also gives us very specific levels for recommended for supplementation. Vitamin D being a fat soluble, soluble vitamin is very important to monitor whenever a patient is on supplementation because too much vitamin D can be toxic to the liver. Neoplazine is a substance derived from the blood root plant. It can be useful given orally, used topically, and or injected into certain tumors. And there was an actual study done at Case Western Reserve University that did show this substance has promise as a cancer fighter. Unfortunately, it can't be patented, so companies can't make a gazillion dollars from it. So it's probably not going to become mainstream anytime soon. Ways to prevent cancer. There are lots of ways that you can take steps now to hopefully prevent your pet from getting cancer. Um, studies have shown, especially with large breed dogs, particularly the study's been done in golden retrievers, that allowing your pet to keep their hormonal influence results in less incidence of certain types of cancer, including lymphoma, osteosarcoma, and hemangiosarcoma. Uh, if you do not either want to leave your pet intact or for females, consider the ovary sparing spay. That will be also be featured in a future webinar for those that don't know what that is. Uh, or a visectomy in males. Or at least wait until greater than one year of age to spay and neuter. Feed your pet a high quality diet. Diet is so important. It really is the case in people too. You are what you eat. And if you eat junk, your health's going to be junk. So feed the least processed diet that's possible for your situation. Raw is best, but not everyone can do this. Home cooked is next, followed by canned, and then a high quality grain free dry food. I'm not going to go really too much more into nutrition because that, again, is a whole separate webinar, which I believe is coming up sometime in the near future. We have a schedule at the end. Um, we're going to let you know when the next webinar is and what it's about. Keeping your pet's weight under control. Fat is pro-inflammatory and chronic inflammation contributes to cancer risk. Said it before, I'll say it again. Lastly, you can provide supplements in the form of antioxidants to help protect your pet's internal organs and decrease inflammation. One great one you can start is an omega-3 supplement, but please make sure whatever product you get that it is sustainably sourced and guaranteed to have certain amounts of DHA and EPA. Many products exist for pets and they're typically dosed by weight. If your pet has the unfortunate diagnosis of cancer, we can help. There are certainly things that you can do. We talked a little bit about them before coming to see us. And there are many methods of treatment we can use instead of or in addition to conventional therapies. Together, we can help your dog give cancer the paw or your cat give cancer the claw. Just want to take a minute to announce some exciting news. I'm very pleased to announce beginning sometime in February. We don't have the exact dates yet, but Probably towards the middle of the month, uh, we're going to begin seeing appointments on Wednesdays at Bark Bus Depot. It's on South Washington Street in Naperville. And so please give us a call at our number 815-929-9393 if you're interested in setting up an appointment. And now we'll uh, see if there's any questions.
I hope I hope everybody heard me. I hope I wasn't just talking to myself. <laughs> Does anybody have a question? Comment? <laughs> thank you thank you so much everybody for joining us I, I mean if, if if there aren't any questions then I, I wish everybody a very good night and um, yeah please we look forward to hearing from you at natural pet <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful night. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yes, if anybody thinks of a question later, you can call us or you can email us. Okay, uh, everybody. <laughs> Wow, that's a lot of food, Mary. You must go through a lot of food. <laughs> Three great Pyrenees. Oh, my goodness. God bless you. <laughs> Can't wait to meet them. Yeah. Oh. Thanks again so much everybody for attending. And and please if there are any subjects that you are interested in, um then uh, uh let us know. And uh, last Tuesday of the month and I believe it's going to be on allergy uh, no um I think it's going to be on, it's, I believe it's going to be on herbs. Yeah, February 23rd, we'll be talking about herbs, herbal medicine. So I have one question about what probiotic I would recommend. Um, we, I, I recommend the probiotic that has kind of the most different bacterial species that, that you can find and we do have some that have as much as about 20 different bacterial species at uh, natural pet but really the the best probiotic um, or the best supplement to probiotic is is a little bit of microbiome so especially if your pet is not currently on raw and um, they should benefit from some microbiome you know, that's a really good question, Mary. Uh, can essential oils help with cancer? I believe that they can, especially with topical cancers, because I know certain oils, frankincense included, um, possibly some others, do have anti-inflammatory properties. As far as taking them internally helping with cancer, I'm not quite so sure. Uh, but I think in some instances they definitely can. All right.
Great. So we'll stay online just a few more minutes. I don't, I didn't, just talking and talking and hearing the, the sound of my voice. I'm, <laughs> nobody likes the sound of their own voice. <laughs> you certainly can come and get microbiome. Yeah. Uh, or um, depending on where you are, sometimes we, we send it. We ship it. Hmm. I got the question, do I suggest a raw diet that is not HPP? HPP means uh, high pressure processed. You know, there, there's a lot of ongoing debate about how much the high pressure processing actually changes or doesn't change the food. It certainly is less processed than, than even uh, a freeze dried. So I think it's okay to feed a, a food that's been high pressure processed because it really hasn't been cooked and, and the, the nutrients haven't been really significantly altered. Uh, or if you, I don't know if you were asking me if I know of a brand that's not high pressure processed. If that's the case, then I would say yes, North, Northwest Naturals. Um, I... That's the only one I think I uh, primal is is I don't think is high pressure processed, but I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Um, what else is microbiome good for? Well, that's going to be a whole nother webinar. Um, but I'll let you know a little bit. Uh, uh, we've used it a little with some success with allergies, certainly, certainly with intestinal problems. Um, we we've uh, dogs that have had uh, no normal stool their whole entire life after getting some microbiomes start to have normal stool. I mean, I don't want to say that it's some miracle cure, but um, okay, great. All right, so um, I think we're probably going to wrap it up here. So um, thank you again so much, everybody, for attending. If, if you have a question or you think of a question that we didn't answer, please go ahead and contact us. So everyone, have a great night. Thanks a lot.